This is a hard one because the whole sentence is underlined and it's a very tricky set of ideas that we need to express. And of course, it's expressed very differently throughout the answer choices. So let's go through these answer choices thoroughly. So the first one, heavy commitment by an executive. This is a passive structure. So right away, that makes us a bit suspicious. And then we get a little bit further makes it likely to miss incipient signs, etc. And the question is, to what does this it refer? It appears to be an empty it, an it that really has no meaningful antecedent. And these are almost always wrong on the GMAT. It's very unclear in this context. Makes it likely to miss signs. Is the it the executive? So. Because of the problems with that pronoun, we're going to say that A doesn't work. Answer choice B, an executive who is heavily committed, blah, 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 makes missing signs likely. Notice that the executive is the subject of the sentence, makes is the verb of the sentence, and it sounds like the executive himself is making it likely to miss the signs. And that's not exactly what the sentence is saying. The sentence is saying that of the the executive commits to this course too heavily, it's that heavy commitment that will cause the problem, but not the executive himself. So we're going to eliminate answer choice B. An executive who is heavily committed, okay, good, good. And then we get all the way to the end of the sentence, especially if it has worked well in the past. And again, we have this problematic pronoun. And this is often a problem in very complex sentences. If toward the end of the sentence, you have a pronoun, it may well be a question to what does that pronoun refer? In this sentence, we've had all kinds of nouns flying around here, and the it could refer to any one of them. And so that is unclear. So pronouns with unclear antecedents, that is just the kiss of death on GMAT sentence correction. Very important to realize that. So answer choice D, executives being heavily committed. All right, that's a little bit suspicious right there to a course of action, especially if it, if it all right, well, here the it would refer to the subject, which is executives being heavily committed not the action itself, but being heavily committed. If being heavily committed has worked well in the past. And again, that changes the meaning of the sentence. Furthermore, notice that this is the only sentence that has an absolute failure of parallelism between the two verbs, likely to miss or misinterpreting, infinitive and participle. So D is just a train wreck. D is completely out. Now we've eliminated very here, we've eliminated A, B, C, and D. We hope that E works. So let's look at E. Being heavily committed to a course of action. Okay, that's relatively direct, especially one that has worked well in the past. So the one is very clear, it refers to the action. That's clear. Is likely to make an executive miss signs. Wow, a very powerful, clear, direct core in this sentence. And then miss and misinterpret are parallel correctly. The only pronoun that appears is the pronouns them and they at the end of the sentence. But that's very clear. Miss signs of incipient trouble or misinterpret them when they appear. It's very clear that the they and them refer to the signs. So there's no ambiguity about pronouns. There's a clear core to the sentence. So E is by far the best answer choice here.